And that's all the audio devices. Hello! Hi! And welcome Hello. to Heaven it's Will us. Be Mine. Will we ever do an intro without me talking over Chorps Away? No. Nope. It will never happen. That's just become part of the brand now. We can't, like, yeah. get around it. Even though I'm on push to talk, I can't shut my damn mouth for two seconds. <laughs> welcome to date night. Also, share your screen with me. Right. Uh, anyways, if, um... If y'all notice the audio is weird, let me know. Um, the intro- I haven't played past the title screen, so I don't know how loud it's gonna get. We are playing Heaven Will Be Mine, which is a new game! New- You're Pretty new! Vigil novel that just recently came out. Very excited. A lot of really, uh, excellent reviews so far. A lot of people reporting, uh, real and significant emotional effect from this- this story and this writing. Um, uh, from the team behind We Know the Devil, which also, um, pretty well regarded, like, western visual novel. Very small in scope, and I understand that this one is also similarly, like, short but impactful. And, uh, I believe this game has its own content warnings, right? So we don't need to... Um, it certainly did on, on the Steam page, but let's let's go over them real quick before we, yeah. uh, go in, if I can find them. Uh, features fantasy violence, body horror, and discussion of sexuality, abuse, and trauma, is what it says. Okay, so there so you go. That is your initial content warning for what's coming up. Again, we're both going into this blind, so we really don't know what to expect. Also, please no spoilers in the chat. Charps really cares about that a lot. Don't fucking do it. I'll kill you. Damn. And we have an I'll extra mod I'll just for it. I'll kill you, IRL. No. <laughs> All right. I'll be disappointed in you, which is the the worst thing I can imagine someone experiencing, which is me being disappointed in them. Okay, we've got three okay. girls. Right, so these are our characters, and from what I understand, it really doesn't matter which one we pick. Um, the endings can come regardless of which character we choose. So All right, let's we, we see. can kind of just Saturn. play it how we want. Saturn's the one from the promo art. Her uh -huh. faction is the Celestial Mechanics, self ship String of Pearls, that sounds horny. Um, combat style button mashing, bedroom style button mashing, can't relate. Um, so who should else we, we got? Okay, so we don't want to read the rest of that, that's fine. So we have Cradle's oh, Graces, sorry, yeah, we have Pluto, whose self ship is the Croon Macula. Um, these are all space things, so sorry if I mispronounced them. Likes. Succulents, good girls, crushing, both kinds, everyone. Dislikes is trying very hard not to have any. Oh no. Poor baby. And then, finally, we have Lunaterra, who is of the Memorial Foundation. Self-ship Mare Chrysium. Uh, good at sniping, espionage, double-crossing, ghosting. Bad at loving herself and everything else. <laughs> oh my god. Um, wow. Oh man, which one do we relate to the most? The one well, that's not this like, one. 
a hot mess. The one that's trying to be nice all the time but can't handle it, I feel like is almost too real. <laughs> Pluto, right? Right. Luna Terra is mean. I, I no. I don't. I don't think we can relate to her. The I same think we have way. to start. I guess we'll start with Saturn, just to. I don't know. Like, do you think Saturn or Pluto? Oh, um. Hmm. What's the chat? What's the chat say? I'm scared to make my own decisions. Uh, I'm already leaning towards Saturn. Crushing. I love her. Lunatera's a big mood. I'm the button matcher. Saturn's, Saturn's the best. Scalar Scout. Scout. Okay. I'm thinking Pluto. All right. So we've we, got see, here's the issue. Everyone for Saturn. Yeah. Charky for Saturn. Hey boots for Pluto. I vote for Pluto. Who do you vote for? Oh God. Uh, I'll go Pluto. I think that's enough. Okay, or, let's well, do it. Okay, well, let's try it. We'll, we'll figure out if it's broken later. Oh no, oh no, the votes keep coming in. We can't let this keep happening. Right, very um, Evangelion. To, to note, I've got my Evangelion shirt on for this stream. <laughs> said this is an alt 80s which explains some this, of the this old is just what happens interfacing. when you load Ubuntu on your laptop sorry to say this is just what it looks like still <laughs> In my ears, the game is loud enough to be, like, invasive, and I feel like that's appropriate, but people, again, let me know if it's, if it's drowning either of us out. <laughs> Oh, 
also not to get too far into it, but the way that um, Pluto's dislikes are listed as like trying really not hard not to have any, and the way that the link was working, it seems very much that Pluto is the sort of person that is like don't ever question, don't ever break the status quo kind of character. Yeah, but also someone who like is trying to live a morally perfect life and puts way too much pressure on herself and is like, I'm getting like big overachiever vibes from her <laughs> being like, oh, we did it perfectly on the first try. Now, neither of us would know anything about overachieving. Yeah. Oh, uh, shout out to Jupy in the chat who is uh, coming at us from 3.30 a.m. their time to watch this. Wow. Thanks, you're gonna have some weird dreams. <laughs> idea of the the giant robo kind of thing like the idea of a giant robot that is also you and you plug into it and it's you and it affects your your psyche and your consciousness because you are given this large artificial body that is directly tied to your nervous system yourself your soul in some sort of way like that's that's sort of the central metaphor of this type of this type of sci-fi yeah um it's it's very much a Maybe a little bit union. The sort of greater plane of consciousness that exists beyond, like, human perception, as it were, like an evolution yeah. of humanity. So it looks like this ship can create a star. A lot of focus on galaxies. culture as well, like yeah. creating existence. And yet, apparently, Pluto has uh, destroyed more than a few mechs in the uh, in the pursuit of this. Pluto, Pluto being so so casual about how terrifying she is is definitely interesting. She big. That was the other two pirates. Saturns. Yeah. yeah. Saturn is the string of pearls. I thought it was hard enough with a lot of uh, mecha shows having to deal with two large sort of uh, factions, but I guess we have a third here. Mm-hmm. Both of the other factions she's she's describing as more violent than than her faction that they mm. want to they want to create 
and uh, the other two are described as wanting to destroy things. I bet they're not actually all in order. We just have to do it. Okay, so we had a space war in this alternate universe during the 50s. for humanity in space. Races are the the separatists in this case. They're the ones that left. Okay. And I wonder if it was shut down because of the terrifying technology that they created. Mm -hmm. So here we have the Celestial Mechanics, which is Saturn's group. And they don't want to be human. And they're separating from the Memorial Foundation and Cradle's Graces, who are fighting okay. over, over whether Earth should go to, whether we, humanity should go into space. And they're like, well, we don't want to be human. And welcome to day one. Wow. Okay. So I've been made aware that each day there are new, like, mailed alerts and communications that we should go into. Okay. But this is our sort of, this is, this is our mission select, so these, these are choices. Oh, so it's like who, oh, comms. Okay. Oh, they have little, uh, definite, little here, DMs open for fight requests. <laughs> Me. All right, so we have a different pilot here, Mars. So is this a collective unconscious sort of thing then is it really going that direction if she can spread her consciousness to others via her her piloting i guess so i guess it's to like move their whole group of like their whole faction together as one and maybe even control them like a hive mind hmm Does it, 
big overachiever vibes here still. <laughs> I mean, I can do it, so. Okay, so the celestial mechanics alternatively want to side with the aliens. Mm. Of a time. I didn't okay. get the impression. They say the existential threat, but like well, they don't specifically say that it's aliens, which I like. Yeah. So what? Whatever this alternative life force is that isn't humans. Yeah. I feel like it's even more vague than that. Like it may just be the prospect that we're not alone and not actually a, a an actual like species. Mm hmm. That's a lot. You know, everyone who's ever said you should be scared, I believe them. Yeah, shit. All right, everyone's got some mail. Slide into my DMs like... Well, I guess this is someone who is being affected by our... Our consciousness. Oh, yeah. I'm already so frustrated. I'm nothing like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Funding's being cut again. Wow, big, big mood. Wow, wow. The National Science Foundation in, in you know, 3232 or whatever. All right, well. <laughs> all right, all this seems real fucked up and ominous. Okay, so this just tells us what we've done. Here we have an alignment chart with the three groups. This is ours. Oh, uh, okay. yeah, okay. I guess we'll keep that in mind. Here's the system. I'm going to save since we already have our first choice. Why not? So we I don't even know if this is a choice, honestly. Like, we may species. have to do both of them. Yeah. Why is one of them big and one of them little? Like, is that just because, like, that's who it's about and that's just what it does? Um, because this is like, do we want to talk to to Saturn or do we want to talk to Lunaterra? Mm hmm Well, who would you rather talk to? Um... I w I would I want to talk to Lunaterra. Well, but it okay. says yeah, yeah. So this is retrograde and retrograde. Yeah. Okay. Oh, here's Mars again. <laughs> I like Mars. The face is very cute to uh, 
to ignore all the other things that have been going it on. It won't let me fight in the robot war, Uwu. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, she is the most, like, overachiever <laughs> sort of attitude. I'm glad we picked her. I think she, I think we can, we, the, she's the most us out of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> of course Pluto's always right, that kind of thing. The Memorial Foundation, they're the ones we're fighting against because they're like, nope, we gotta come back to Earth. We can't come Right, they're the space. Earth. Yeah. So essentially we've got like Earth, space, and aliens, and we're playing as the space faction. Which I like. Yeah. I, I like the space I like that. I think that's the side that I would pick if I had to like knowing nothing else. Mm-hmm. So she betrayed us, Luna Terra. Wow. Dragged. Okay, so Mars and Luna Terra were a thing. I love how Pluto is like so regal and like has a plant, and uh, Mars is wearing a t shirt that says Cradle's Graces on it. Right. But Pluto's got sort of the like. Oh, what's the, like, the sash? This is me when I'm at work versus ever how everyone else dresses at work. <laughs> this, is, this is just my real life. Pluto's ship is by feeling and thought and belief, and uh, Lunatera's ship is mechanical. A lot more like like a Gundam kind of thing. So so far we have two of the uh, pillars of robots. Mm -hmm. All we need is Saturn's the string of pearls to be powered by like willpower or something else like equally vague.
damn, that ship it, it must be huge. I cannot get the sense of scale of this. Yeah, I need a picture. Fight. Like, she's coring out the moon, so she is as big as the moon, which is what I would imagine from a robot that can create a star. But then Lunatera's robot is just like a Gundam. Also, they keep talking about tides, and I wonder if a better, a, a way to think about how they talk about tides in ships is like a gravity generator, because Maybe. gravity causes tides. Also, this is the robot existential fight equivalent of like walking into the club, like looking real hot and seeing your ex and being like, oh, are you <laughs> jealous? I would kill everyone. It definitely comes... The the size metaphor works for her fucking ego. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so oh, here are our choices. Who wins? From what I understand, the, the, the choice is not the mission. The choice is here, at the end of the mission. So, we can either... So we just affect the outcome. We're not even making choices for our character, it seems. We just decide who wins the fight. And so, oh, and then, see, it, we're loyal to Cradle's Graces, or we're betraying Cradle's Graces in favor of the Memorial Foundation. Yeah. I see no reason to betray Cradle's Graces at this moment. Okay. Also, we get an achievement for that called Good at Bad Decisions. <laughs>
What? Holy shit! Oh. <laughs> this is an anime. This really is? It's got all the parts of a mecha anime that you want. A lot of talking, and then oh, she's lying some fast-paced action. Hmm. size of a galaxy. All right, we're... Hmm. Christ wow. Almighty. The fucking attitude on Pluto. Yeah, but her ship is so huge. Like it's, I, I, I like that it's keeping it vague because of the limitations of the the medium. But, um, but her ship is so unthinkably huge compared to what Luna Luna Terra is has a Gundam, right? And, right. It seems um, that way. It seems that way, and and Pluto has like it literally like an existential threat, right? Like right, a ship um, that can create a galaxy. Yeah, Turkey corrects me and says it, it says size of the universe. So you know that's pretty big. Oh, and we get a little more information on the things that we have encountered, ah, like okay. the Crown Macula. Construction. Create the sort of self that we wished to see, huh? And Nyx is the the person who's working yeah. with us now. Yeah. So so she must have split. She that must mm -hmm. have been the split that she was like, no, we can do better. We can keep going. And they were like, no, you crazy. And then she bounced. Also, I like the idea of it being limitlessly expandable. Like that it, it has the, the potential for infinite possibilities. That's what I say about all software that I work on. <laughs> That's called feature creep, Dr. Nix. We know what that is. <laughs> End results are indistinguishable. Yeah, it's Coral Token points out like the Pluto, Pluto's mech is like a death the Death Star. Yeah, I think so. Like she's like the Death Star and um Lunatera's mech is like a like a TIE fighter. Mm -hmm. Title theory, okay. Let's get science. <laughs> If any default physical properties would exist in the universe without the influence of culture, okay. So again, the celestial mechanics are the ones that side with the existential threats. So this interest of wholly separating themselves from humanity. I think 
culture in this case is used to refer to consciousness in a way. Mm hmm. I'm sure as we explore this, we will understand better. Yeah. All right, let's go to our comms. God! <laughs> Sid says, is culture actually phase on? And damn, you got it. God, fucking Pluto. <laughs> oh my god. She's so judgy, I relate so hard. <laughs> that she was being too mean but like I, now that Mars has said more I'm like no it's okay I think this is just this is but they both are like this People in the chat are keep bringing up the the red on red, and I agree that like it could be less red, um, <laughs> but it's not bothering me that much. I wonder if it changes with the characters. I assume it does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like if you need to know if we're playing as the Empire or not, how about these red <laughs> comms? <laughs> that doesn't seem right. I feel like Earth currently feels more in that direction you know but this is given this is you're right no given the, anime so everyone's the bad guy right and also given what we know about the mechs and everything you know what you're right this actually does feel a lot more like we're the bad guys <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Wow. I know that Big feeling. Mood. Yep, wow. Ha ha! <laughs> I also like how uh, Mars types this way and Pluto types with you know, punctuation Mostly and stuff. punctuation yeah. and all that, yeah. All right. Well. Okay, so we just have to go to the next mission. Okay. Oh, well, let's... Just real quick. Abandoned lab, sign lies in wait. Okay. What are they trying to find there? Well, this is the first beat that the music has had. <laughs> It's no less moody because of it, but it's like...
So that's what they mean by not wanting to be human. Right, not to be drug dragged down by the limitations. <laughs> I don't think we can relate to Saturn as much, but I but I like them a lot. Take care of this kid who acts out for attention, unlike me who acts out for pride. Yeah, shit. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> wow. Sometimes, two things can be true. So here it seems we continue to have invasive consciousnesses. We should favor celestial mechanics. I think. I think narrow escape. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Well, to play this one how we want, and if we want to do the rest of them, we can consider the other routes.
the fucking pose on this mech. Yeah. Can I? No, okay. I don't think I can get rid of the, the text box, so I can't get the full fucking... So we have this perceived lives. history. Yeah. But also they come seemingly from all different sorts of, like, walks, you know? Fucking egos on all these characters. Just uh, well, at least these two specifically. Lunaterra seems a little more grounded, a little more um, maybe desperate. Not maybe not the perfect word for it, but similar idea.
leads us to the moon. Also, it, it speaks to a very specific type of um, like the human condition of this this particular type of othering. Yeah. Such as like if we're not humans, if we're not on the earth, then fuck you, we're not humans. We're gonna, you know, yeah. break this whole thing apart. Earth is like, we don't want humanity to be divided, and of course the this faction does, like, we want to separate and be separate in space. Mm-hmm. And so we finished our first set of missions. And they're calling Mars Ares now because it failed as a colony, which is fascinating. Mm -hmm. It's all going to come down to the moon. Doesn't it always? It's just like Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel. Oh my god. Which also ended with a duel on the moon to unleash a dragon living in the moon. Fucked up. All right. Oh, Celestial so, Mechanics is winning. Well, yeah, we just we just betrayed Grace Graces. Well, we but we just picked one, so it wasn't. They're not all equal. That no, was they a are weighted. Choice. As ah, you can see from the gravitational pull of them. Yeah, that's interesting. All right. Well, let's go check our mail again. Okay. So here we get more information on what what defines a culture and its importance in a colony. It sounds like Dr. Nix is advocating this um, concept of unified field culture. This idea that like there should just be one everything. And it, it matches with the, the robot we're piloting, right? This idea yeah, that, that we it's are... going to take over all consciousness. Right, yeah. all consciousness becomes one. Again, very union. All right, let's see.
All right then. Well, we got some more missions. So once again, we decide who we're going to interact with here on the day. Um, what's our uh, let's, what's our call let's here? Deep, let's deep dive first. Okay. Oxygen ocean. They mentioned before that the oxygen ocean is on Mars or on Aries, <laughs> and a product of terraforming. Is she operational? Who? The girl reading this. <laughs> oh my god! I love all the emotional blackmail going on from Pluto here. Yeah, Jesus Christ. All right. All right, we should we should favor Cradle's graces. We should we should have them win in this playthrough probably. Okay. Since that's the side that we're on. You think we should stick to our uh, our our factions? I don't know. We'll see. I guess we'll see, yeah. This particular conflict is initially 
more exciting than the Lunaterra one, specifically because it is like it, it feels very um, unstoppable force, immovable object kind yeah. of. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like you know, we get the idea that uh, Pluto like is the universe more or less, mm-hmm. and Saturn and is the thing Saturn that just is breaking physics. Just yeah. yeah, breaks literally everything like. God, that line. That's the moment she's waiting for to give life to all the feelings unleashed when she decided she'd let herself have them. big mood. I make twice of this <laughs> on this fucking stream series. Yeah. 
Wow, uh, amazing how it keeps being the perfect joke to make. Wow. Well then. All right, we're Oh, we're tied. We're, we're even. So we only had one for that day. Yeah, we only do one each day. We did the last two over oh, two right, days. Oh, right, but the, yeah, yeah. Oh, we got a DM from Mars, but first, more science. Yeah, I don't think the existential threat- I think the, the existential threat is an idea. It's this encroaching idea of otherness and othering. Right. And whether that's moral. And to, to solve the problem of othering on Earth, we othered space instead. Mm -hmm. Right? We're like, oh, there's no othering if, like, space is the other and we're Earth altogether. Also interesting that we connect this to the Cold War. So... Mm -hmm. The last line here. Ha. Wow. What a fucking segue. to be right back. I have to get a drink real quick. Okay, well, you know what that means. We put this together just for the stream. Wow. Alright. I'll go get a drink then, too. We'll be back in just a moment.
Well, I'm back. All right. Everyone's been enjoying our break picture that we put together for the stream. Oh, good. But let's start up again. <laughs> wow. I, <laughs> we stopped right here, but man, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's shut up. <laughs> Extremely that's shut up. If you think about it, it was me, wasn't it? It's like Pluto.txt. <laughs> <laughs> and all the connotations that come with it. I feel like, yeah, it's definitely the most line in that it could be used in so many different situations. we're getting into that fucked up shit as if we weren't already knee deep in it yeah all right, all right here we go testing the finishing touches on the prototype all right let's move in Like the most correct answer for our character is to fight until we forgive yeah, each other. Yeah, that seems more correct.
Yikes. Not to pull away from the moment, but I'm like dead ass getting like Naruto vibes from the way that this is all positioned and going. <laughs> that last bit where they've uh, fought so much that their arms have ripped off, like. Like, the idea that this fight starts immediately with them just, like, annihilating each other is just yeah. so... Oh, it's just so... Chupi <laughs> <laughs> in the chat asks who's Naruto and who's Sasuke. We, I think it's all very clear that Pluto is Sasuke. <laughs> If one of them has to be, then it's definitely Pluto. <laughs>
big fucking mood. That's, <laughs> I've certainly never felt this way. I don't know what you're talking about. Let me just take a big sip of my water. I feel like we've talked about, like, destructive relationships in previous games, but this is the I most fucking... I feel like this is such a fucking... like, common one to, like, really... And, but it's really well written. Like, such a common destructive relationship where, like, one person doesn't care about this themselves like so much that they pull away from the, this person who cares about them too much and like it's just you can't do anything about it because both people are at the wrong time in their lives yeah and it very it very does the mecha thing of having the robots just be an extension of the self like mm -hmm. to such a degree that it is like not comical but it's definitely like you know it's it's heavy yeah, and when she says give me back the part of me that you took, she's talking about that she gave this love to this person and she doesn't feel like she cares about it, and she's, you know, she's missing this piece and, and thinks that, oh, well, this person that I loved can give it back to me, but that's not how it works. You can't, can't choose who you fall in love with, it just happens. And I haven't started reading this, so hold on. Okay. Fascinating look at this, uh, this conflict. Yeah, it's this, this underlying conflict of this, this thing, the designation of alien is required by humans. Okay. All right. Let's see what's in our mail today. 
Oh, Dr. Nix is not Dr. Nix. It's Nix of Cradle's Graces for this one. Hmm. Y'all? Shit's fucked up. Y'all? Folks? I like this metaphor of space. Like, people born in space have... They don't have the same restrictions of culture in that, like... Like, being told who you have to be. Uh, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Because those born in space no longer have the connection to Earth. Mm -hmm. You know, as as we've talked about, it's the it's the it's both the othering, but also the ability to to grow out of what is considered you know acceptable. <laughs> this is such a conversation. <laughs> Rhetorically distinct from war. <laughs> So no matter how much it seems like we've killed our opponents, we have not. Okay, and that explain and that makes a little bit of sense given, at the end of the last one, um, Luna Terra's ship was like piecing itself back together with its own internal gravity, and then I think also pieced us back together. <laughs> Mars is also talking about the complicated feeling of, like, wanting to be separate from the culture that you're from because it is oppressive to you, but also feeling like a missing, like, wanting to also belong. Mm -hmm. I just love killing people, Pluto. <laughs> it's not that they're worse than I am, it's that I'm just better than they are. I wonder if I'm just a sociopath, yeah. <laughs> My God. 
What if I deflected all of my issues onto you, Mars? Yeah. <laughs> wow! God, All right. Such such the such overachiever vibes. Well, oh, that's us. Yeah. <laughs> but what if something that's bad us. happens? Nope, can't. Nope. That's not me. I want to go to Lagrange Colony because okay. Lagrange. It's probably Lagrange, but uh, Lagrange is a, a, a town in Texas. And uh, I've been there many times. So it's named after the ZZ there. Top song. Probably. It's that actually it's the, the other way around, but yeah, the ZZ Top song is named after. It's not, I don't I don't actually know that much about it, but I do know that my mom saw uh, ZZ Top perform in Houston after high school before they were famous. Oh wow, that's cool. The faces of Pluto are also the most, like, overachiever, sort of, like... Yeah. Refuses to lose an argument sort of she faces. She also reminds me a lot of Noelle from, uh... From the other game that we played, the baseball game. Oh, yeah, um... Oh god, why can't... Oh, this sucks. This sucks so much. Butterfly Soup. Butterfly Soup. She reminds me of Noelle from Butterfly Soup. Yeah, I can see that. The chat's also letting us know. I know, the, the timing there's... is so bad that as soon as we figured out the word Butterfly Soup, like a half second later, the Butterfly Soup posts started coming in. Right. In case you're wondering the level of delay that we're on. They're better at keeping track of the date night lore than we are. I'm just paying attention to the story here. It's. I find that when I watch things uh, back, it's a lot easier to read along and listen to what the commentators are saying. But when you're commentating, it's it's difficult to read and speak at the same time. But luckily, we're geniuses. Right. <laughs> I say not learning my lesson. Ooh, okay. Do we have an actual fight? Or do we talk through our complicated emotions? I like the second one, even if we weren't on the team of Cradle's Graces. Yeah, I, I think, especially after how uh, bad our fight went last Plus, time. I learned what Lagrange points are from Gundam Wayne. Bitch, I got a math minor. <laughs> God damn. Alright. Let's talk through our issues. I'm sure it'll go great. Aw, oh, yeah, now it's a jam. I like this music. Saturn rushes in. Saturn confirmed for
God, they're such dicks to each other. I know. Wow. I'm hearing the stream is going down, and OBS agrees with that. Oh no! Yeah, the, the like your screen share kind of started for a minute. But... All right. Well, we'll hold on a sec to see if we can uh, get back on. Looks like it should be back. It's back, yeah. All right. Thanks, gamers. Can you still see the screen? Yeah, nothing changed for me. Okay. Oh, maybe it's going to keep doing this for a bit. Well, we'll keep going for now. God, Pluto. <laughs> here just for a sec to see if it comes back. Alright. Yeah, OBS disconnected, which means it will pop back up in a second, and then we can finish this day up. Oh. 
still spinning. I, I refreshed, but it's still spinning. Yeah, it's attempting to reconnect. Oh, now it says offline. There we go. Well, maybe. Well? Well? It still shows offline when I refresh. Okay, well. Weird. It's connecting, but it's connecting at all, all zero kilobytes per second. Our old pal. All right, well, at the very least, we can finish this, put it on the old inner dot net for other people to watch and finish. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And if it comes back, great! Yeah. Alright, so let's finish this mission. Yeah, that's kind of where I was going to say it anyways, because yeah. this is about halfway through the game, so I'd rather we not try to push for the four hour stream yeah, to finish really it. Yeah, this is really heavy, so I think it's good to process it. Huh? <laughs> what happened to all the subtext? It's just text now. Oh, sorry. Uh... Nope. All right, that won't work. Sorry, I skipped over that one a bit fast.
Oh. Well then. Wow. All right. What a what a what a thing. What a what a way to end it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, while the computer machine continues to break, why don't we just take a save here and go back to the main menu? See to... you a uh, week after next, folks. Sorry, um, there's going to be a delay, but you get to—I mean, you get to see this on YouTube, so that kind of stretches it out. Right, um, just a little you bit. See, savor that ten minutes for the yeah for the you next. You don't know week. how good you have it. Really? Because <laughs> next week I'm going to be on vacation and I won't be able to stream because I'm going to be on a family vacation versus my normal work thing where I can still stream. So, I'll see you the week after that. Everyone. Yeah, so, man, wow. So we're like halfway through this, this story and... Huh. It, it's it's really interesting. It has a lot of themes in it. Um, <laughs> there's like this primary theme of othering, and but then also, oh, I think your stream might have started again. I don't know. Um, it, it I mean, there's this primary theme of like this the, the theme of the the robots and why we, we went into space and we we went in space to stop the problem of othering each other because we were humans versus space and. Then we got to a certain point, and we, I think, I think the the implication is that with Pluto and her mech, they they weren't interested in in combating the existential threat anymore because she could unify all of consciousness. Um, right, there would be no other under a there single would be consciousness. No other. Right, and that's what they're trying to do, and um, and then uh, the the remain the remaining people on earth are like no like this was bad we shouldn't have gone into space to try to combat the other um the other's always going to be there and then you've got saturn who is like embracing the 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 role of other and is trying to actually become the other instead of um instead of just like this human approximation of other and uh, so that, that's really cool. And at the same time, um, everybody is uh, a lesbian and everybody has dated everybody. And <laughs> uh, they've all got a lot of baggage about it. And they, they all, like, I guess, went to space pilot high school together and still have a lot of baggage from all dating each other in space pilot high school. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's the sort of story that like with all of the, the the science fiction stuff going on makes me feel really stupid. Um Oh, really? I don't know. I, I feel like they're just like they're they're using metaphors for a lot of like concepts that if you tried to use the real words for them it would be too complicated. So I like that. I, it's interesting that this like civilization has this like theoretical and philosophical construct around the, these concepts that they call gravity and culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not that I don't metaphor. like it and that I'm not like getting a lot of it, but like the way that it throws jargon and the way that it writes its its emotions sometimes makes me feel like I'm like not smart enough to understand That's it. like every fucking mech anime though. Like when I listen to Friends at the Table of the the Mirage uh Twilight Mirage, like this is also how I feel. Like I feel like everybody's talking around a concept that I don't fully grasp and I'm not in on it like the same way. Yeah, I guess and that does that match the this... reason. Okay. It's also the reason why I I don't typically like this kind of sci-fi like because it ends up setting up a lot of questions and then not actually answering all of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I'm just generally like in in media that I that I watch, I, I don't like that. Um, I don't like high-minded metaphors that don't pay off. 
Um, I like more of like visceral metaphors, but this does have a lot of visceral metaphor as well. And I think that's what I like about it. Right. It dabbles in both, which I think like it, it's a stark contrast when they're when it's like waxing philosophical and when it's like just actually coming down to the robots. Yeah. Um, but it needs to be abstract because of the concepts it's talking about. You know, like, you can't talk about those concepts concretely. Right. So, it is, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, in terms of, like, like mech anime in general, like, how do I feel about it? Like, I'm not, I'm not really, like, a huge fan. Like, I've definitely watched some Gundam. Um, I've never watched Evangelion. Um, it's a little too pretentious for me. And I say this as an academic and someone who just had an entire, like, 30-minute tangent on the latest visual novel book club about quantum mechanics. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but it's just, it's a little too pretentious. Um, I think I might know too much about quantum mechanics. I think that's the problem. Like, mm. I think after you know a little too much about, like, the actual science, like, when you don't think that a reference to L Lagrange is is clever um then you're kind of like too far out the other side yeah because it's it's one of those things where i think one of the i think the writer tweeted about just using like the wikipedia list of like unconfirmed like phenomena in space as like a, that, a starting oh, that's point why, that's why it feels that way yeah at least for like naming and stuff so mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I don't know. I feel I tend to feel this way about stuff with with robotics and AI as well because it's just like once you're too much of an expert, then the metaphor kind of is like it. Sometimes it can kind of feel a little childish, right? Because you're it's like oh I know about this and you just looked it up on Wikipedia and like it's not that's not bad. That's not wrong. Nobody can know everything, but like I think there's a certain thing that you lose from. Like, you lose the, the power of the metaphor once you know too much about, like, the thing that it's referencing. Sure. That's how I feel. No one can relate to this problem. So... <laughs> wow. Hey, welcome to the special guest Pluto wow. to the show. Wow, thanks, steve No one can relate to your problems of being too smart. <laughs> but, like, I, I still enjoy it for, you know, for the... The things I'm running into specifically with it. Like, I enjoy what it's doing, or at least what it's attempting to do right now, and the way that it deals with its character relationship. It is very, I feel, like Evangelion. Like, the more it gets into it, it's definitely more of the all of the robot fights are metaphors and everything yeah. is connected into this unconscious idea or subconscious idea. Like, it all it is very ru runs much that. the thing that it is. Like it's doing. It is very much the thing that it is, and it's doing a great job. Yeah. And yeah, so it's yeah, it's definitely not my cup of tea either. Like this is not the sort of thing I actively seek out. But like for what it's doing, I think it accomplishes it well. Yeah. Yeah. I, and find, I, am the, still, I find it fascinating. Like, yeah, I'm, and I'm still I'm enjoying my time with it. So it's not like it's like yeah. failing. Yeah, it's it's a fascinating story, and I'm I'm somewhat like transfixed by it because of the way that it's written and how metaphorical everything is. Uh, it's really it's really interesting, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's it's not the sort of thing that I that I seek out in my free time. It is definitely trying to capture something much larger than like we know the devil was. I feel like it's but, it's but definitely that's like also very in line with the genre that it that this is, right? Well, no, like, totally. It I'm, be I'm the just genre saying, like, if it wasn't, if you come in just like, oh yeah, it's the we know the devil people, you're you're getting in way more over your head than you might expect. Like, it definitely like take takes a type to to read this and like really like feel it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, for sure. But it's like it's very much like there's a lot of a lot of the pretentiousness is like established by the genre, and I think that's why I it, like am enjoying it because it's like they didn't come in here and be this pretentious. They are taking that pretension from this established genre and then like doing their take on it, and yeah. I enjoy that a lot. Yeah. 
And wow, wow, oh wow, these characters. <laughs> yeah, I love them. It's it's fun. It's fun. Like so, it, sometimes it's just very fun and cathartic to like engage with stories where everyone is a fuck up. Like right. You know, everyone's a villain like everyone's got like these problems and they're not gonna solve them you know and they're also unique in the way that they are fuck ups mm -hmm. and they're very they're, they're very on point like it very much is like a very specific dagger to the heart the ways that each of them are fucking up yeah and definitely there's like a, a relation there to the characters yeah but yeah it's it's I, it's uh really enjoyable and um Definitely worth worthwhile for sure um, to to play. I would say if you're out there and you can't stand to wait any longer, then just go buy it. It's available, and you can make all the decisions that you wish that we made during our playthrough. Yeah. Yeah. Just like one final thing is like it, it's very evocative in a way that's very appealing, right? It it. It feels bigger by the way that it's put together. I like how it feels very, very small and personal in those moments. Like, that's the part that I really like, is the parts where it is small and personal, but it, like, when Pluto and Lunaterra were talking and it was like very clearly a metaphor for their relationship, mm -hmm. and it was such a relatable metaphor, like it was immediately apparent what the metaphor was, and and so many people can see it and be like, oh, I've I've lived that. I've been one of these two people before. Um, but they still talk about how, they still talk like they're so far removed from it, right? And like, mm -hmm. it, it feels like the universe is like is moving to the whims of these characters in a way that's like everything is so much larger, but also so much smaller and personal. Yeah, and it's a great metaphor for relationships and for love, right? Where you are, where it feels like the your, it's your whole universe. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all of the all of the allegorical stuff going on is really cool. Um, I think it probably because it's modern, it's also like more more palatable, right? Like it's it's. Um, versus older stuff in like especially older anime in the same genre where it's like this all these ideas except there's except it's all dudes and one girl with huge tits and she's like ha ah, and falls in love with the protagonist right like it does it doesn't have that part you're going a very different um like era than i was expecting i thought you were going like even earlier like original mobile suit gundam not like I don't know, <laughs> Infinite no, Stratos. I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't watch it that far back, so I feel like I'm not, I don't have the same, like, right. I'm not entitled to 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 pull that far back as an example. Not that it's totally like, you know, incorrect that it is a focus on like male, um, like male relationships and their struggles, but yeah, it. I guess it, it comes from different shows. It comes from different expectations. Well, and also just like that, it's the the overall story is trying to talk about the human condition, but it's still like it still has to to pull in these other like these tropes of of the, like current culture. Like um, I can I can tell you the story about about what it is to be human, but oh, but women are still separate. <laughs> like, right, you know, these like, the very male centric you. stories still. Yeah, and and it doesn't. You can't. You know, it's it's it, as stuff is more modern. It it's not it doesn't do that as much because the people writing it don't have that problem. Right. This definitely feels like if it were an anime, right? Like it would be one of those ones that's like held up as like what's expected to be a turning point for the genre. Yeah, I, I, I would say I'm a little more on the fence about it because I think it could either be, like, a really good homage, right? Like, a really good, like, mm. oh, they're taking this idea and, like, doing it real good. I, I don't know that it's... I don't know that it's particularly innovative right it's not like, right but it's like a really well executed example of the genre right right not to say that it's innovative but just that it is 
it, it feels like it would be the hearkening of what people would say is a turning point for the genre. Like, just to, to, to have taken these ideas and expanded them in this way. Yeah, I do really wish this was an anime. Um, I think that if I watched this anime, I would feel the way I felt when I watched Big O. Uh-huh. That's all. And I think it just, like, would match the scale, would be a little, you know, make a little more sense. And there, there just a little more expressiveness to, to the robot parts that's lost in, in, the, in the format. But I think it would be really difficult to visually represent Pluto's robot in a way that... And I know the name of the robot is not Krav Maga, but like in my mind I can't remember what it's called and I've arrived <laughs> at Krav Maga, and I'm sorry. Um, so Pluto's <laughs> robot, um, you know, I think it would be really difficult to, uh, to visually represent, which is why it benefits from this format, because right. it's difficult to concretely, like, draw. And, and it... It helps that you don't know what they look like when they use the language they do to describe everything. Yeah, for sure. Like, the fact that it's unknowable is part of its charm, is part of, you know, it's like, uh, it's look. Yeah, I'm having fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's cool. So, so see you in two weeks. If you're See watching you this time. close enough. But yeah, until next time, you are just one of a billion stars. Oh my god. <laughs>